Bhagwan is Sakar. So if you remember what I said, that basically means Bhagwan has a definite murti. Bhagwan is a human form, just like you and me. So a quick like story slash Lila. If you remember Raman and Swami, we went over this in the rapid fire. Raman and Swami was Bhagwan's guru. But Raman and Swami's guru, so Bhagwan na guru na guru was his former guru was Atman and Swami. Atman and Swami was powerful enough to do samadhi. Samadhi is when your soul leaves your body to go somewhere else for eternal peace, for peace, not eternal, just peace. And this can be done by going to do the Divya Darshan of a Dev or an Avtar or even Bhagwan himself. So Atman and Swami could do Samadhi within a short period of time under the under the leadership of Atman and Swami, Raman and Swami attained the skill, but he could only see the light, divine light form of Bhagwan. Mind you, Bhagwan is a human form. So he asked Swami in Satsangi Jivan Prakar 1, Adya 14, Oh Swami, I want to see God in his glorious human form in Samadhi, who, with whom I can communicate. My desire to see Lord Narayan in person has not been fulfilled. So basically, Raman and Swami is saying that he wants to Lord Narayan that was also equivalent to Swaminar Bhagwan. That's basically what he's saying, just a different name. So this is this desire of his has not been fulfilled. He goes, I am disturbed. Have mercy on me and fulfill my lone desire. He, The only thing that Ramana Swami wants is to have their son of Maharaj. And he is he begged Atman and Swami for it. But Atman and Swami believed Bhagwan to be Nirakar without a form. And basically when he did Samadhi, he could only see the light form of Bhagwan, which is false because Bhagwan had a human form and this Raman and Swami refused to believe this because he had Nishche that Bhagwan was a human form so Raman and Swami without losing Nishche and Maharaj searched for a new guru and fell across Sri Ramanujacharya the leader of the Ramanuj of Sampradaya never losing Nishche Ramanujacharya said to Raman and Swami always observe your dharma perform worship to God associate with pious persons and keep your senses under control. So let's take a step back and kind of analyze this. Observing our dharma, our dharma as, as kids would be to go to school, to make sure that we get a good education, to make sure that we're, we're helping our parents when necessary. Those are considered our dharma, ethical duties that we should do. Ethical meaning moral. And this can also be done in the form of like community. If you see someone who needs help, you help them, whether that be in mandir, school, regardless. We should practice satsang in our daily lives too. To think that, let's take a step back and to like make sure that you are a good person too. You have kindness, you have empathy for other people. And you perform worship of God. So doing penance of Bhagwan, doing bhakti of Bhagwan, And associating with pious persons. So associate, like I said before, associating yourself with positive influences and keeping your senses under control. If you remember, we do ekadasi to keep our senses under control, but that will be covered in niyam in great detail. So I'm not gonna go into too detail. This is just a, another example of how niyam and nishay are connected. All of these three elements are connected. And if you have, and if you have all of this, then basically this is what Ramanujacharya said to Raman and Swami, to keep all of these in mind. And after a short period of time, Bhagwan granted darshan to Raman and Swami in Sakar form, rewarding him for his unwavering nishchay. Raman and Swami never lost nishchay in Bhagwan. He knew that out there, there was a human form of Swami and Bhagwan. And he knew that I needed to achieve that. I needed to see Bhagwan in his human form. So Bhagwan, Bhagwan went and gave darshan to Raman and Swami for his unwavering nishchay. And to have this like blind nishchay without even because Bhagwan Swaminan did not exist during this time and to have this nishchay that there was a sakar form of Bhagwan is quite fascinating it's unbelievable how Bhag how Raman and Swami did that and Bhagwan states in Vachnam Gadara Pratham 45 Purushottam Bhagwan is eternally sakar and that murti is extremely luminous so Purushottam, Bhag Purushottam Bhagwan is the equivalent to Swaminan Bhagwan that's just a different name for Bhagwan just has the, how the Bhagwan has different names like Gansham Maharaj, Hari Krishna Maharaj, Purushottam Bhagwan is one of them, is eternally Sakar, so human form. And the Murti is luminous. It's extremely vibrant. 
if you go to Mandir and if you closely do Darshan of Maharaj with all of your focus on it, you can see the vibrancy and you can see the Tej that comes out of Bhagwan's Murti. That Murti that, uh, that our, our Acharya Maharaj Sri and Lalji Maharaj have installed in our Mandirs in the US and in India. And Bhagwan installed in his, the six Mur Mandirs. Those are Divya places. Those are places that are extremely Pavitra and pure. Those Murtis are Bhagwan himself. And Bhagwan continues and says, his perfect all-pervasive Antaryami Murti Brahm characterized by Satchidanand, is actually the divine light of Purushottam Bhagwan, but he himself possesses a definite murti. So Atman and Swami could only attain samadhi of Brahm, who is the divine light of Bhagwan, but he did not attain samadhi of Bhagwan himself. But Raman and Swami did under the leadership and under the guidance of Ramanujacharya. And this is a perfect example of how to, uh, to, have, to have good guidance Guidance isn't just enough. You need to make sure that the people you rely on are good and they are positive effects on you, not negative. If we take account, Atman and Swami was a negative impact on Bhagwan, but Ramanujacharya was positive. So Raman and Swami knew that I'm going to need to make a choice here who to leave my guru and find another one, a positive influence, or to continue with this negative influence. Raman and Swami chose the correct answer. And he found a new guru.